The question is that the House do now adjourn until 1pm for the private notice question on Bahrain human rights. As many as are of that opinion should say content, contrary not content, the contents have it. My Lords, proceedings will now commence. Some members are here in the Chamber, others are participating virtually, but all members will be treated equally. For members participating remotely, microphones will unmute shortly before they are to speak. Please accept any on-screen prompt to unmute, and microphones will be muted after each speech. If the capacity of the Chamber is exceeded, I will immediately adjourn the House. And I ask Noble Lords to be patient if there are any short delays as we switch between physical and remote participants. The usual rules and courtesies in debate apply. Private notice question on Bahrain human rights. Baroness de Souza. My Lords, um, I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper. My Lords, we have and will continue to raise both cases at senior levels with the Bahrain government. As the former Minister for the Middle East and North Africa publicly stated on the 8th of January, we are deeply concerned by the death sentences handed to Mohammed Ramzan and Hussein Musa. The Bahraini government is fully aware that the UK opposes the death penalty. We also continue to monitor their case as it is taken to the Court of Cassation for final review. Baroness de Souza. I thank the Minister for his reply and appreciate that the noble Lord is a steadfast defender of human rights. On the 13th of July, Bahrain's Court of Cassation will decide Mohammed Ramadan and Hussein Musa's death sentences. False confessions were obtained under torture, according to the International Rehabilitation Council for Torture Victims and other international bodies. The torture was carried out by two Bahraini bodies, which have received equipment and training from the UK. One of these bodies, the Bahrain Special Investigations Unit, failed to meet the minimum professional standards and minimum international standards, including the UN Convention Against Torture, to which Bahrain is a signatory. In view of the UK's role, will the government now make the strongest and public representation to the Bahrain authorities to prevent the imminent execution of these two and other prisoners? And will the minister commit to meet with the representatives from rights group before next Monday? My Lord, on the noble lady's um, final question, if certainly schedules are now, although under the current circumstances it would have to be a virtual meeting, I will certainly look into meeting with, as I do with many rights groups, and if that can be facilitated, I'll be happy to do so. On her primary point about representations, let me assure the noble lady we will continue to make very strong representations on all cases, as we have done so in the past. Indeed, it was because of uh, UK representation on this particular case that it went through the retrial, and that was a first in Bahrain's history in itself. However, as we await, obviously, the decision of the Court of Cassation, and after that, we will continue again to monitor both the situation on this case as well as other cases as well. Baroness Ramsay of Cartvale. Uh, but, my lords, by any objective legal judgment, Mohammed Ramadan and Hussein Musa have not had due process. And why can't the FCO not put its mouth where British money is going and very vigorously obtain for these two men, at least now, a delay of execution and a fair trial? My Lord, first of all, I would remind the noble lady that the final decision of the Court of Cassation still remains pending on whether they will uphold the death penalty in this particular case. But let me assure the noble lady, and I disagree with that, we have consistently, through the support we've given to Bahrain, both technical and on the wider human rights agenda, continued to remind Bahrain and implored them to look at the issue of the death penalty. And as we stand very firm, whether it's with Bahrain or other international partners, we remain steadfast against the death penalty, wherever it's um, um, used in the world. Lord Scriven. Bahrain has seen a 1,250% increase of the use of the death penalty since 2017, with 10 political prisoners facing imminent execution. With clearly documented failures of the SRU investigation into Mohammed and Hussein's torture, 
Will the government now accept that its technical assistance to Bahrain has failed in its aims and objectives and suspend this assistance to Bahrain if these two men's death sentences are upheld? My Lord, the United Kingdom's technical assistance is kept under regular review and is provided in line with international st standards. And let me assure the noble Lord fully complies with our domestic and international human rights obligations. We believe that the positive change sought by the international community in Bahrain itself will only be achieved by the UK and others by working directly with the government and exerting influence. The Lord Bishop of St Albans. Uh, the noble Lord and Minister has assured the House that representations we made to the authorities in Bahrain expressing our complete and utter opposition to the death penalty. Has he also reiterated, reiterated our opposition to the use of torture to get confessions? And will Her Majesty's Government review its existing package of reform assistance to Bahrain to see what further support can be offered to strengthen human rights and the rule of law in Bahrain? My Lord, the uh, Right Reverend President is right to raise again, as others have, the issue of torture. And as he will know, the noble, and Right Reverend President will know, the UK Government consistently and unreservedly condemns torture and cruel, inhumane or degrading treatment or punishment. On the issue of UK assistance, we are committed to supporting Bahrain-led reform and are confident of its positive impact for people in Bahrain across a variety of areas, including judicial reform, youth management, and also the recent steps forward that we've seen on both the oversight bodies and the positive uh, legislation which has been enacted in, protection, in protecting migrant workers. Lord Collins of Highbury. My Lords, uh, in February, the noble Lord told the House we are far from where we want to be, uh, but our continual engagement with the Bahraini authorities is producing results. Now, we've provided 6.5 million in technical assistance to the very bodies uh, that have enabled these men's tortures and death sentences. Will the noble lord confirm, one, that we will be able to observe the court, if that's due to take place uh, on Monday, that he will make public representations on these cases, as my noble lords uh, have mentioned, and will he pursue the matter if the court's decision is to uphold these uh, death penalties, uh, ensure that representation is made to the highest level, including the king? My lords, let me assure the noble lord again, as I've said to other noble lords, that we will take a very strong line, as we have on death penalty, uh, in Bahrain and indeed other parts of the world. On this particular case, it is yet to be decided, so I would remind noble lords of that particular point. Our support and technical support has yielded return, including the review and the retrial of this particular case. Uh, the noble lords are specifically whether the, uh, we will be allowed to attend this particular trial. I believe that the actual rules of the Court of Cassation do not allow for the British Embassy to attend or observe on this occasion. Um, we await the outcome of this particular um, decision of the Court and we will take, of course, uh, I listen very carefully to the strength of representation in your Lordship's House, as I always do, and we'll discuss it with other colleagues, including my right honourable friend, the Mid Minister for the Middle East. Lord Galakia. My Lords, I welcome Britain, Britain's position in relation to death penalty. But with less than one week to save their lives, and in light of the UK's assistance to the bodies that enabled their torture and their sentences, can Her Majesty's government confirm that if they make representation in the cases of Ramadan and Mosa, it will be before the Court of Cassation's final decision on Monday, the 30th of July, and not less than that. My Lords, um, there's been no formal confirmation directly to us uh, on the exact date, but uh, several noble lords have quoted uh, the date of the 13th of July. As I said, it is for the court to uh, make a final review, and after that, ultimately, this decision um, is um, whether there is any exemption or stay or clemency granted. Of course, there remains an avenue uh, to His Majesty as well. Baroness Bennett of Manor Castle. My Lords, this week the Foreign Secretary announced the first of what's colloquially known as Majitsky sanctions against including 20 individuals from Saudi Arabia who were involved in the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. Um, should, tragically, these clearly unjust 
torture tainted uh, executions occur, will the government uh, impose similar sanctions against the responsible people from Bahrain? The Magnitsky sanctions were uh, something part and parcel of the legislation that went through your Lordship's House um, and, and as part of the overall sanctions bill or the Sanctions Act as it now is and I, I welcome and I know later this afternoon we will be discussing the announcement as well. On the issue of designations we have certainly made clear that those who abuse human rights will be held to account but it would be wrong and inappropriate to speculate on future designations. Lord Faulkner of Worcester. Uh, my Lords, I've never doubted the commitment of the noble Lord, the Minister, to the abolition of the death penalty in all circumstances in all countries. And I should declare an interest as Vice Chair of the All Party Parliamentary Group for the abolition of the death penalty. But can I ask him why the 2018 Foreign Affairs Committee report on the effectiveness of U UK assistance to Bahrain um, has not yet been properly um, debated? And, uh, and the review that it was, was promised has not yet taken place. That, that, review, that review referred to the gravity of human rights violations there. And the FCO were urged to review the current situation in Bahrain and report its findings to us to further consider whether funding for the, for the um, Special Investigations Unit should continue. Why has that not taken place? And can the minister look at that again? My Lords, I will certainly look at that again. I mean, the normal process is to respond both in terms of receiving any report in an appropriate timeline, but if I could say to the Noble Lord, I will write specifically on this issue to him and, of course, uh, share it with other Noble Lords as well.